And welcome to Cutting Edge Pain Relief and our discussion today about the aspect of chili peppers and nerve pain. So what the heck gives? What are we talking about with chili peppers and nerve pain? How does that make any sense whatsoever? What's the value? Is there something to be gained? So today we're going to talk a little bit about capsaicin over-the-counter products, as well as prescription capsaicin, predominantly for nerve pain. So when we talk about nerve pain, in this context, really what we're talking about is the aspect of peripheral neuropathy. So what exactly is peripheral neuropathy? Peripheral neuropathy is nerve pain that's present within the context traditionally of the skin present within the aspect of the hands, the feet, but sometimes truncal regions, and it can be from a number of different causes. So if we take a look at that, some of the most prominent causes of neuropathy are going to be things like diabetes and 60% of most neuropathy that exists. And then idiopathic is basically unknown, uh, different types of neuropathy, and, and meaning it hasn't been officially diagnosed. In addition to that, there are things like chemotherapy that can cause uh, neuropathy, HIV can cause neuropathy, things like shingles can cause neuropathy. But at the end of the day, neuropathy itself is the element of a burning type sensation, which sometimes is lancinating, meaning it's piercing in nature and just unremitting. So if you have a burning sensation that just really gets after you, Things like shingles or diabetic neuropathy that sometimes you feel in the feet. That's what we're talking about today and how to be able to potentially treat it. And when we look at the aspect of peppers, which people are like, oh, okay, yeah, peppers, I get it. What is present in peppers that can really be able to make this potentially better? And what's present in peppers is a type of chemical that's called capsaicin. So capsaicin it, it works on a specific element in particular. It's a receptor that's called the TP, TRPV1 receptor. And that TRPV1 receptor does a number of different things. So it actually stands for transient receptor potential channel, but it's of a van vanilloid subtype. So that's where you get the T, uh, that's where you get the initials from, okay? So if you take a look at this diagram, you can see capsaicin in the top left-hand corner that's present there, and it's binding to these receptors that are called TRT, that are called TRPV1s, uh, right? And so these receptors have a number of different things that are present within the cellular system, but in essence, they uh, target sensory neurons, and they allow for the inflow of a number of different molecules, but in particular, what we're interested in is in sodium and calcium. And without making this like high school biology, right, one of the things that we're really getting into is how does it function and what happens in order for those nerves to be affected. And so one of the things that takes place is that binding of capsaicin, it influences the channel, the channel membrane, and how cellular function takes place. Bear with me. This is kind of important. The reason why we're going through this is because we're going to talk about how nerve pain can be influenced and stopped by this molecule. And we're basically talking about using this molecule in different ways. OK, so hang in there with me, guys and gals. OK, so when we take a look at this, looking at a different picture, what we see is that capsaicin binds this TRPV1 receptor. There's calcium inflow and it causes a number of different things. It can stop the function of sodium coming into the channel, which basically stops the propagation of nerves functioning in certain ways. It can also affect the intracellular, meaning inside the cell, breakdown of different elements that allows the cell to be able to be functional. And so those are going to be things like the cytoskeleton. They're going to be things like the mitochondria. They're going to be things like protease and endoplasm and reticulum. All those different elements are things that can potentially be involved with the context of how cellular function works within the aspects of the neuron. So why would we want to be able to change something like that? We're going to get into that in just a second. But basically, if you imagine 
when you have that burning, that shooting, that tingling pain, we know that the nerves aren't functioning the way that they should be, right? So let's talk about, as we mentioned before, the different types of neuropathy and how there can be differences that are present within the context of nerves and how they might have an aberrancy or inappropriate, inappropriate context of how they would function. So when we look at that, and this may be a little bit difficult to see, but if you take a look in the column on the left-hand side here, this is kind of normal traditional functioning of the way that the nerve is positioned with an axonal head, it gets sensory information that comes in, it interprets it, and it goes out. The second column here is the aspect of postherpetic neuralgia, or what you would see in shingles where you get this change that's present within the context of the nerves and whether they're frequently as present. So you end up having pain as a result in terms of the change of the denervation that's in place. The third column is that of diabetic neuropathy and HIV neuropathy, where you have changes in terms of the cytokines and how those nerves connect in. And then Finally, there are other different types of neuropathies that can occur that can cause an increase in terms of the dendrite, dendritic growth and things along those lines. So when those things take place, one of the things we want to be able to do is to be able to change the functioning of those nerves that are not behaving in a correct fashion. And so capsaicin can be able to do that. And we've known that for a period of time. But really what we've been involved with is the context of looking at how does capsaicin work, particularly in prescription strength. So to kind of give a good quick reference to this, traditionally you have things like Salon Pass and other capsaicin products. When you look at an over-the-counter type transdermal patch, it's a 0.025% or at max the 0.075% versus a prescription strength, which is 8%. So it's orders of magnitudes way more powerful and way more potent. So what does that mean? Broken down in English, right? So broken down in English, what that really means is that the strength and potency of what you can get by going to a Walgreens or CVS and just picking it up from the shelf versus a prescription strength, they're vastly different. And how they're going to be in terms of effectiveness will also be different when we're talking about dealing with peripheral neuropathy, okay? So could this potentially be useful in other contexts? Possibly. Right now, the product that we're talking about is something that's called Qtenza, all right? And we're going to show you a little bit more about that in just a second or so. But Qtenza itself has two main indications right now that's covered by insurance. And the first is diabetic peripheral neuropathy, and the second is shingles. So we talk about that, the fancy name for it is postherpetic neuralgia. And why are those things useful? Well, it's useful because when we took it, take a look again at that neuropathy little diagram, what we see is the vast majority of peripheral neuropathy, 60% of it comes from diabetes. And if we really kind of get down to the numbers, on average, roughly, there's 34 million people in America that have a, di di a diagnosis of diabetes. And of that, 30%, pretty much close to 10 million, have some degree of diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And traditionally, the way to treat it after a period of time is to do, quote unquote, conservative therapy, which is various different analgesics. But at the end of the day, what most people end up doing is taking something like a gabapentin, a Lyrica, you know, a medication of that sort. And we're going to talk about that in just a second or so, how these things compare head to head. But to get back to kind of our biology here for just a second, one of the things that we see is when you apply a capsaicin product, particularly a potent capsaicin product, you have something like this. And that is, if you take a look and you have this innervation at the top here being the skin and these other areas in here being the dermis, so we have kind of this cutaway, you can see that there are different nerves that connect into the skin. And what our capsaicin, that is that more potent element, 
it can get deeper into the dermis, into the aspects of the skin to target nerves that are inappropriate, which we normally couldn't reach with the aspects of those lesser potent molecules of capsaicin. So that 0.025% or 0.075% of the over the counter, it can't reach this degree of depth while the 8% can be able to target nerves that are inappropriate nerves and can be able to improve them, right? So let's talk a little bit about what exactly does improve really mean, right? So what that means is the following, is if we take a look and we compare the studies that looked at placebo, so placebo meaning, well, it's like a sugar pill and or a patch that really doesn't have anything that's in place versus one that actually has the medication, what you wanna see is their statistical significance. And what we've been able to see is that indeed there is. So when we talk about that, the statistical significance is the following. So if we take a look, we can see that that aspect of cutenza is in green, the placebo is the component of the gray. And what they have looked at is that the, the components of how much has it reduced overall pain um, from baseline. And so on the left-hand side, what you can see in that y-axis is the percentage of change from baseline of the pain. And what Cutenza has been able to do, at least by week three, is at the 30% reduction in pain. And that's a statistical significance compared to what you see in that gray line, which is placebo. So what we're saying is at the end of the day, Cutenza can make an impact and it can make a major difference in terms of being able to deal with your pain. But more importantly, there's actually some other things of why you would consider utilizing it, right? So when we talk about efficacy, one of the things we want to see is, is it able to be not only effective, but can it be sustainable over a period of time? So when we take a look at that two to 12 weeks, what we end up seeing is that the 40% of people got at least 30% pain relief versus placebo, which didn't get that same degree of relief. And more importantly, for individuals, what they need to think about is the following, is when you talk about using traditional nerve pain meds, as many patients know, they have side effects that are associated with them. So if you're taking a gabapentin or you've been prescribed a Lyrica, you can have everything from sleepiness to lethargy to having dizziness to having fluid gain. And all of those things are going to occur because you're taking that pill formulation, which is going to have, quote unquote, systemic effects, right? Meaning it's going to affect the body and you have all these other things that take place. Because this is a patch and it's a topical application, you don't have those same type of responses, right? So when we take a look, one of the things that we really want to be able to understand is, okay, so if I take a pill, how does that end up affecting me versus if I was to take and apply a patch? So one of the things that was looked at in some studies is they were able to compare head-to-head -head studies of looking at on the right-hand side, which is purple, right? That purple piece over there is looking at the aspect of cutenza and how long did it take before you saw a degree of efficacy. And what we're able to see is that the time to onset of pain relief was 7.5 days. So let me repeat that again. The time of onset of pain relief was 7.5 days. So within the context of a week or a little bit more than a week versus the median time onset of the aspect of something like Lyrica, which is what they compared head to head. The traditional time frame is 36 days. So we're talking about a month duration when we're looking at this, right? So if we're talking about a month duration when we're looking at this, that's a huge factor in terms of how impactful that could potentially be to individuals that say, you know, maybe I'm concerned about taking a patch versus a pill, which is a whole host of different reasons why, again, taking the patch may be more efficacious or effective, but when you talk about getting a quicker relief and a sustainable relief, that's something to really consider, right? So when we get into those type of dynamics, what we really wanna be able to kind of attest to and understand is having an idea about 
how this might work for us, right? We're talking about this peripheral neuropathy and how does, how does one actually utilize this and what's the dynamic of how, what's the fit, right? So when we take a look, one of the things that we see is that diabetic nerve pain, what you normally will do is apply that patch for 30 minutes versus for shingles pain, you're gonna apply it for give or take about 60 minutes. How long might that be able to last for? So if you see it at the bottom of the screen, three months. You talk about doing an application here, meaning in the physician's office for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, depending on the type of type of peripheral neuropathy that you have. And you can be able to have sustainable pain relief that will last you for as long as three months with the onset of pain relief that's faster, quicker, and with less side effects. That's why we're talking about this today, because we do believe it is something that every patient that has a problem like this should know about, right? So when we talk about how exactly does it work, we're gonna show you real quickly. So let's kind of cut away to a quick video that gives you some insight about how Qtenzo works and how you would actually have that application. So Next, using a topical anesthetic, the treatment area is anesthetized and then cleaned and dried. If necessary, clip the hair, but do not shave. Healthcare providers should wear nitrile, not latex gloves during application. Use of a face mask and protective glasses is advisable. If necessary, cut Qtenza to match the size and shape of the treatment area, and then peel back a small section of the protective release liner. Place the adhesive side against the skin. Slowly peel back the liner while smoothing the patch against the skin. To ensure Qtenza maintains contact with the treatment area, a dressing such as rolled gauze may be used. When treating feet, Qtenza patches can be wrapped around the dorsal, lateral, and plantar surfaces of each foot to completely cover the treatment area. While the patch is in place during the 30-minute treatment, monitor the patient's blood pressure. Ensure the patient does not touch the patch. A cooling pack or an appropriate analgesic medication may be offered for pain, if needed. Okay, so you got the gist. As the patient, you come into the office, you chill out for about 30 minutes to uh, an hour, depending on what your indication is. You get the patch applied, whether it's to the foot or the trunk or other area that has that aspect of neuropathy. We give you a local anesthetic that's typically in a topical or cream fashion, possibly first, assuming that's something that you need, and an ice pack thereafter. And then you let this thing do its magic. And after that, the upside is that you can get benefit and relief for as long as potentially three months, as opposed to having to take a pill every few hours, every day, and having to remember to do that and get improvements in terms of having that aspect of nerve pain that's normally that burning sensation. We're gonna take a quick break to talk about our channel and we'll be back in just a few minutes to talk a little bit more about peripheral neuropathy and how to be able to treat it. All right, so we're talking about the aspect of peripheral neuropathy and how chili peppers plays a role in all of this. Chili peppers has that aspect of capsaicin, which works on that TRPV1. Again, that receptor that actually mitigates the aspect of different pain, particularly from a peripheral standpoint, and how we can stop that pain by using something that has a capsaicin component, which is different then over the counter, again, to kind of pop that back up on screen, Qtenza is gonna be 8% versus the aspect of an over the counter, which is gonna be much less than that. And its degree of efficacy is certainly gonna be not only quicker onset, longer duration, less side effects. So those are the things that we're talking about with this. So the very first question I think most people would ask is, so does my insurance cover it? So we take a look at this, it's covered under Medicare Part B, so if 
that's the case, you can be able to get that coverage. If you're under 65 and you're commercially insured, you very well may be covered as well. So those are the aspects of the insurance coverage. And then what I've had a number of patients ask me is, so can you do this at home? This is not an application that you can be able to apply at home. This is something that you really need your physician to be able to apply for you, but to be able to come into the office, get something like this done, and take ha having to use Neurontin, Amitriptyline, Cymbalta, Lyrica, all those things off the table, pretty big um, a gain that can be had by doing something like this and having value that can be able to improve your overall pain relief. Uh, outside of that, the things are, where is this going going forward in the future? It's clearly this product is being looked at whether it can start to expand its degree of coverage outside of diabetes and shingles to deal with other neuropathies, as you saw in that pie chart earlier, which looked at things like HIV, chemo-induced therapies, other things that are in place, um, particularly for those patients that have an oncologic or cancer diagnosis, you know, to be able to take pills regularly can be problematic just because of the nauseousness and other things that are giving um, them challenges. So if you can be able to apply a patch to be able to get that same degree of relief with no side effects, quicker onset, and then sometimes better efficacy, why would you not pick it? Um, outside of that, that's our major discussion for today. If there's questions about peripheral neuropathy, how this compares to over-the-counter, we'll field it at any point in time, but it's a pretty simple, efficacious product that I think most pain patients haven't heard about. Traditionally, it's not something that's really most prominently um, foremost in most pain practitioners' minds and thoughts, and many primary care docs may not have heard of it either and haven't utilized it. So in particular, if you're diabetic and you have that foot pain, hand pain that's present, that's burning and sensation, this is a product for you. Thank you so much for your time and for you viewing this video. As you know, it will be present on our YouTube channel and definitely for those individuals that may need to uh, connect someone else in and have an understanding about the value of what this product can provide. Cutenza, a capstation patch of 8% that you apply for anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes that can be able to give you value that can last for as long as three months and then can be repeated um, thereafter without the side effects of having to take a pill or the potential challenges with having to have consistent ingestation of a pill on a daily basis. Again, cutting edge pain relief, trying to be able to help people punch pain in the face, get your life back and do the things that you love. Thank you so much and have a great day.